Hey everyone, what's going on? Nexius here, bringing you guys another Magic Find video. Today we are looking at 100 Magic Find runs in the Burial Grounds in Hell Mode. So what I do in this run here is I kill Blood Raven first, then I go into the Crypt, I check some of the known chests that are always spawning in the same place, I'll check some of the graves, and if I come across any champions or elite mobs, I end up killing them as well because I do have a little bit more of a chance compared to regular trash mobs. But as you guys can see here, there's always a super chest with a super unique guarding it. And this is in every single run. So every run, I end up going into the crypt and I open up that chest there with the super unique. And then I teleport around a little bit as you can see here, looking for any champions or other super uniques or anything of that sort. If I come across any, I quickly kill them, check and see what they drop, and then I continue on to the next one which I think is called the mausoleum so overall this run is kind of long I do also want to note that it is a little bit risky to do if you're fresh geared playing hardcore and the reason why it's a little bit risky is because the ghouls in this place the ghouls in act one do a lot of physical damage and if you get caught into say a group of four and it's an elite pack it can pretty much one shot you if you're not careful especially if you get amplify damage on you so what I did in this run since I am playing hardcore is as you can see here these are some ghouls right here so I try to keep my distance the elites always spawn in that bottom right corner there for me. So I know to teleport to the top left of that room to stay out of the physical melee range of those ghouls. Because if I teleport into the group of four, same right there, um, sometimes what I'll do here is I'll actually pr quickly press escape to pause the game and I'll check and see how the situation is going to be. If I'm going to die, I just leave. Otherwise, I'll take the risk. So playing hardcore, especially on single player here, I try to play very safe. I try to keep away from the ghouls while killing them. Um, as you guys saw in the first run there, I ended up finding a Malrune, which is pretty damn good luck for the first run of this actual series. On run 19, so 17 runs of nothing good, on run 19 I find a Talrasha belt. So overall, it's kind of been okay just based off the first run with a Malrune. That's a huge drop for me. I'm trying to make a call to arms, so to find the Malrune this early on is pretty awesome. On run 26, so I believe that's seven runs later after the Talrasha belt, I find a four socket Colossus Volge, as you guys can see there. So that's going to be pretty good for an insight or an, um, uh, what's the other word, infinity, if I want to make that. But I have to find two birds, a mal and an ist first. But as you guys can see, um, I'm finding some decent stuff, kind of. On run 26, the same run, I found uh, the 20 life small charm. On run 27 here, I kill an elite pack here and I find an executioner's justice. Completely useless for me, but as a collector and as somebody that might potentially want this as a barbarian or any kind of character like that, I figured I would mention it. It's a top high level item, so it's, I think it's just worth mentioning even though it's not really useful. Um, on top of that here, we have Razor's Edge from Blood Raven on run 29. Again, it's not really a special strong weapon, but it's kind of like a high level weapon, so I figured I would mention it here in case you guys are interested in that. Uh, a couple runs later, I think this is run 38, so that's about 9 runs later, I believe. We find some Mirrorwalk boots off the ghouls. That's kind of funny, finding some skeletal boots off some. Well, they're not skeletons, but they're undead, so it's kind of funny. Um, as you guys can see here, again, nothing that great, but worth mentioning. So we're not finding too much outside of the Malrune, but we do strike a little bit of luck here. We find a Viper Magi and a Ivet Lich on Blood Raven here on run 38, so the very same run. Actually, uh, I got that wrong. Um, I think that was run 39. Yeah, that's run 39, not 38. I don't know why I mistyped that, but it's actually run 39 um, that I find the Viper Magi, so next uh, run. Now, again, a couple runs later, on run 42, we find another 20 life small charm. So we're finding a lot of decent small charms in this place, but I don't know if it's specifically targeted here, or I'm just getting some kind of luck here with the charms. Um, on this random champion pack, uh, going into this little crypt area, I end up finding a wolf howl on run 44. So every couple of runs, I'm starting to find something now, whereas at the beginning, I was taking like 10 runs of nothing. Um, at least I found a Malrune so far and a Viper Magi, which can be very good for uh, just progressing through Act 4. I haven't cleared Act 4 yet, so some of that stuff will be quite nice to clear out when I get to that point. Um, but as you guys can see here, I also find a Geed's Fortune on run 48. So this is four runs after the Wolf Howl. I find a decent Geed's. It's a 32%. 40% is perfect, so it's a little bit off, but at least it's not like a 25%, as you guys can see. 
Now here on run 52, we find a Talrash's mask, which isn't that great unless you're not that geared, then it's good for the mercenary, it's good for yourself if you're trying to collect the Talrash's set, but I already had one and my mercenary has one because it's pretty common, but you know, it's worth mentioning as I always say. On run 57, five runs later, we find a Alder weapon, which is one of the most common pieces uh, to find out of all the class sets, so it's nothing too special, it's not even that good, uh, so just worth mentioning though because it is part of the class set. Now, on the same run, later on into one of the crypts, I find a rainbow facet. It's pretty bad, but the fact I found a unique jewel is definitely worth mentioning, of course. Um, so we did find that rainbow facet. Now, three runs later, I'm going through another crypt here, the mausoleum. So there's the mausoleum, the crypt, and blood raven that I clear. Um, here in the mausoleum, I find a raven frost, I believe, here. This is the unique ring. I was hoping for an SOJ or something, but of course, you know, it's got to be a raven frost or a minald heal. Uh, sometimes it's an angel ring. Um, either way, uh, that's what we generally get when it comes to the top three most common rings, at least for me. Now, the next run, I think, um, run 60 was Ravenfrost, run 64 is the 100 poison damage small charm, so four runs later we find that charm. Now, ten runs later, on run 74, we find an Ethereal Edge, which is pretty good for Barbarians and other uh, physical damage dealing classes, but it's not that great, but it's still worth mentioning, it's a pretty decent weapon if you don't have something like a Breath of the Dying. Now, as you can see here, I pause real quick there because I have Amplified Damage and I'm in the middle of Ghouls. Very easy to get two-shotted there, it's not worth taking the risk in most cases, uh, but I did find a Griswold Armor there on run 75. Now, on run 76, we find a Ko rune. So, almost every run, I'm finding something of decent. The Ko will be quite useful for making Heart of the Oak, also known as Hoto. Uh, most of you will know it as. And to finish off this run, we find a Trang armor from one of those little graveyards or graves. So, overall, that's the entire Burial Grounds run right there. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I killed Blood Raven first. I went to the bottom, which is the crypt. I cleared out the crypt of all champions, of all super uniques, the chests. And then I went to the mausoleum at the top right, and I did the exact same thing as you guys can see here. So I didn't find too much, and it's pretty risky uh, if you are running into a lot of ghouls, especially if you're playing hardcore. I wouldn't really recommend it clearly after these results with the risk. But overall, um, it's not too bad. I think the biggest problem with it is it takes a long time to clear compared to, say, Mephisto on Hell mode, especially in single player where you have the same map over and over and over again. You can just keep clearing out Andariel or Mephisto with ease, whereas something like this has a lot more risk to it because of the ghouls. And then on top of that, it just takes a lot longer. It's a little um, less efficient in terms of finding magic find stuff. Um, so overall, I would definitely not recommend this place, but I'm pretty sure these kind of videos are just to see, you know, what can drop from these particular places no one ever recommends this place but you know maybe you can drop something let's take a look so that's the reason why I'm doing this video clearly it's not going to be a contender because no one has ever mentioned to do this before really so overall it's a pretty good video I hope and I hope you guys enjoy the results and I'll see you guys on my next one see you guys